What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com, back with a new SketchUp rendering tutorial for you. So today I'm making my first video showing you how to get started with V-Ray. So V-Ray is probably the industry leader in uh, static rendering, so uh, rendering for still images, that sort of thing. So I wanted to give you kind of a walkthrough of where everything is and uh, just kind of a general overview on getting started with V-Ray. So today's video is brought to you by my newest supporters on Patreon, Stefan Carl. Carlson, Giuseppe Toscano, and Anita. So Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting the show at the links down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, I think one of the problems with rendering is a lot of people really try to start way too advanced and they get confused and then they quit. So I'm hoping to give more of a step-by-step -step approach to V-Ray rendering. If you're looking for something more complex to start with, I recommend you check out Architecture Inspirations. So Min has a fantastic channel over there about working with V-Ray. So make sure you check that out. I'll link to that in the notes down below. But um, for this video, what I wanted to do is I want to start by getting familiar with the interface. So to start off, when you first open V-Ray, you should have three toolbars. The V-Ray for SketchUp toolbar, the V-Ray Lights toolbar, and the V-Ray Objects toolbar. That's assuming you have version 3.6. And so if you don't have any of those and you have V-Ray installed, you can just right click, go into your toolbars section, and you can find those down at the bottom of the list. So you can now run those. You can also access some of this stuff by going to extensions, V-Ray, and then you've got your different options in here as well. And so I wanted to start off and take a look at the V-Ray for SketchUp toolbar. So the V-Ray for SketchUp toolbar is going to contain the tools that you're going to use to edit and create your rendering. So you can see there's a setting in here for the asset editor. There's a couple settings in here for render interactive, uh, viewport render, and also frame buffer. And there's a few other options in here as well. Um, we're going to focus primarily on these first three for right now. So so to start off, I'm going to create a very simple shape in SketchUp. So I'm just going to draw a 24 inch by 24 inch rectangle. I'm just going to push pull that up, um, say four inches. And then probably what I'm going to do is just give this kind of a beveled edge using the follow me tool. So I'm just going to select the top face, use the follow me tool, and then click on this little corner that I created in order to bevel this. And I may actually move the top of this down a little bit just to make this a little bit shorter. So, and you do need to make sure that you don't pick up any of this extra geometry on the back side. So I'm gonna shorten this down probably another inch or so. And so this is gonna be kind of our platform in here. I'm gonna erase out my default model. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check out the UI for V-Ray. So, or the asset editor for V-Ray. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna click on your asset editor. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up a window that looks like this. And so within this, there's several different tabs in here where you can edit things within your model. So it may pop up and it may look like this when you first get this. So you can see how there's two arrows here to the left and to the right where you can pop up additional um, information. So you can access that stuff by clicking on those arrows. And so I want to talk about each one of these tabs and I want to focus on the materials and the lights. So first of all, the materials section is going to allow you to apply materials to your model. So you can see how right now this has a list of all of the colors that are active within your model. And that'll change depending on what's active in your materials section. So if I was to come in here and click the drop down for purge unused, that would get rid of a lot of different materials within my SketchUp model. And you can see how when that adjusted, your V-Ray material list will adjust as well. So this reflects the materials that are in your in model section. So all of the materials that are actually within your model. And so you can apply some of these different materials within SketchUp in here, and then you can edit the way that they're gonna look within V-Ray. So, it, like for example, if I was to apply a whole bunch of stuff having to do with this gray color, and then I was to come in here and I was to create a rendering, and we'll make this, if I was to come in here and do an interactive render, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, I could adjust the different things having to do with that within either the quick settings, or also I could click this button off to the right, and I could adjust the things having to do with this. So like for example, if I wanted to make this color M06 like reflective, I could come in here and I could click this to the right to adjust this so that it actually reflects light. And you can see that a little bit in your rendering over here. But basically you can use this to either adjust colors that are already in your SketchUp model, or you can use this to apply different colors to your model. 
So let's say for example, and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out all the materials that I put in here because that was we don't really need that right now. So let's say for example that we wanted to use this object as a wood kind of base to put a couple other objects on. So one thing we could do is we could go into SketchUp and we could apply a wood material from the SketchUp library. But there's also a library of materials contained within V-Ray that you can apply to this. And so you get to that by when you open up your asset editor you want to be in the materials section and you want to click this little left arrow right here and you can see how there's a series of categories for different kinds of materials so in this case if I was to scroll down you can see there's a section in here for wood and laminate and each one of these sections has different material presets and textures in here that you can apply to your models so in this case what I would do is I want to apply a wood veneer material to this base so I'm gonna scroll down and there's some options at the bottom for veneer and so what we're gonna do with those is first thing I want to know is you can click this little slider in order to make these material previews bigger or smaller so if you want to get a better look at what these look like you can use this slider right here you can also adjust this so that these show up as more of an image or a series of images as opposed to a list with descriptions off to the side but what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna take one of these veneers so in this case I'm just gonna take the first veneer on here the veneer a01 and we're gonna apply it to this we're gonna apply it to this object in our model. And so in order to do that, the first thing we have to do is add it to our material list. So you can either right click on it and click add to scene, or you can click and drag it in here to add it to your scene. And so you can see how what that does is that brings this into your material list. And if you were to go look inside SketchUp, then this is actually gonna show up in your material list in your materials section as well. And so what we want to do is we want to apply it to this model. So you could either apply it using the materials section within SketchUp, or you can select the object you want to apply it to, right click, and click apply material to selection. And so you can see what that did is that came in here and that applied this V-Ray material to this selection. So you can see how now this, this object is showing up as wood in here. And so if I was to go up and do another interactive render, you can see how now if I zoom in on this, this actually has the wood material applied to it. And so it's gonna render this based on that. And so a few things I wanna note on that, especially if you zoom in here, is there's some, there's different settings that are applied to each material in here. And V-Ray kind of automatically applies these to its own materials. But you can notice, like for example, if I really zoom in, this is applying a bump map in here based on the material image. So you can see how this is bumpy when I really zoom in. And it doesn't look super good if you really, really, really zoom in. Um, it looks kind of choppy, but if you zoom out just a little bit, then it looks really realistic. So you can see how you kind of get a realistic material look in here based on that. And you can adjust that by coming into your uh, bump mapping. You can adjust like the how strong the bump map look is you can basically adjust anything having to do with your materials over here on the right hand side so you can click on one of these and then come in here and adjust those over here so we'll get more in depth on materials a little bit later now i want to talk a little bit about lighting and actually before i even do that i'm going to create a few spheres in here and apply a couple different materials to those um, so we can kind of take a look at how those are going to look And so one thing I want to note is as I do this, um, at, if I run an interactive render, these objects are going to show up as soon as I add them in here. So if I was to delete this out, for example, and we were to use an interactive render, that would get deleted out in your rendering as well. If you were to do a static render right here, then this would only render this once and it wouldn't dynamically update as you go. So um, one is more processor intensive, the interactive render is, than the other one. But um, that's kind of the difference between these two um, different render types and we'll talk about these more in just a minute so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna apply some different materials to each one of these spheres so I'm gonna apply a glass material to this one maybe a car paint material a gold material and then we'll apply a polished chrome to this last one 
So you can see how those have all been applied as materials um, within SketchUp. Well, now we're going to go back and we're going to run our interactive render again. So I'm going to click on this, and you can see how this is actually applying those different materials in here. So if I'm if I was to zoom in, you can see how this glass material is actually kind of refracting um, the light. So this chrome material is reflecting everything, as are these metal materials right here. And you can see how each one of them treats light a little bit different. So this car paint, for example, um, treats light different than this gold material. You can see how one of them kind of reflects a little bit more. This one more scatters the light. So you can adjust the way that light looks using, using your different materials. And so now what I want to do is I want to apply a couple different new lights to our rendering. So to do that, we're going to use the V-Ray Lights section, and then we're going to adjust those lights using the Asset Editor in the second tab right here. So you can see how if I was to click on my lighting right here, um, you can see how the only light within this uh, within this section is the sun. And so you can adjust the brightness of the sun um, by adjusting some of these sliders in here. So you can make this brighter, you can make the sun bigger, you can do a lot of different things in here by adjusting that. Well in this case what I want to do is instead of adjusting the sunlight, I want to add a couple different artificial lights to this to this rendering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to the V-Ray lights section and you can see how there's a whole bunch of different kinds of lights in here. There's spotlights, there's sphere lights, there's rectangle lights, a lot of different kinds of lights in here. And we'll get into lighting a little bit more in depth a little bit later. But for now, let's just come in here and let's apply a couple rectangle lights. And so basically what rectangle lights are is they're rectangles that emit light. So in SketchUp, all they do is they just show up as kind of a white box but as you stand them up, you can use these to emit light. And so right now you can see how that's not really affecting our view very much because it's not a very strong light. And so what you can do is you can come over here in your V-Ray light settings and you can adjust the intensity. So you can drag this slider up in order to adjust the intensity of the light in here. And you'll notice, if we kind of zoom around this a little bit, that you're getting a little bit of a reflection of that actual light box in your material. So you can see how as I zoom, you can actually see this light right here. And so you could either come in here and really adjust the intensity of these lights up um, in order for this to affect this. You could also go into your settings and adjust your exposure, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this light and I'm going to make a copy of it. So all we're going to do is we're just going to select this light and we're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode. So select the light, tap Q, click in the middle, then you can set your base point and then you're going to tap the control key to activate copy mode. So when you activate copy mode, you can see how this creates a copy off to the side. And so you can see how the lighting is starting to affect the different materials in here. And we'll probably bring the intensity level down. Um, so in this case, I'm probably gonna bring the intensity level down Let's bring it back down to 100 for right now, maybe 250. So enough that it's still giving you lighting in here. But then one thing you'll note is right now you've got these big ugly lights in the background. Well, you don't really want that. Well, one of the settings you can adjust within the lighting section for each light is you can go down into the options and you can check the box for invisible. And so when you check the box for invisible, that means that those are actually in here emitting light, but that V-Ray is not actually gonna see them as geometry, so it's not gonna render them as geometry. So you can see how now, if I was to kind of rotate around here, you can see how these have the reflections of those lights inside of them without actually having the lights themselves showing up within your rendering. And so then the other thing you could do and I apologize, I've got like a million windows on my screen. The other thing you can do is you could apply a different kind of light. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to apply a spotlight. So all I did is I just came in here and I selected spotlight. And then I set a point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that up above so that it's pointing down on your on your lighting. And again, we'll get more in depth on lighting a little bit later. But one of the things you'll know is with this spotlight, 
it's got this circle in here for the actual light that it's uh, providing. And so you can actually adjust the width of that by going into your lighting settings and selecting that light. And you can adjust the cone angle. So you can see how the cone angle basically adjusts how wide that light is gonna be in this case. So you can also adjust the intensity. So you could bring this down to something a lot lower or you could bring it up to something a lot higher. And so that's one thing to note about rendering in V-Ray is you kind of have to think like a photographer and really rendering in general. You have to think like a photographer in the sense that you have to think about how your lighting, how your scene's gonna be lit. So you can see how like, for example, if I was to come in here and I was to turn the sunlight off and just have these artificial lights in here, then things get lit a little bit different than if the sun is actually on. So you have to think about all of those things when you're working with V-Ray. But you can see how these materials are reflecting all of your different lights in here. So they're reflecting your spotlight as well. And maybe what we'll do is we'll bring our rectangle lights down a little bit so we're not getting that extra glare in the background. But this kind of gives you an idea what this can do. And so there's also a section in here for adjusting V-Ray geometry objects. So these are objects that are in here. This is your third toolbar that allows you to add things like proxies or fur. So you can use that to create things like grass. Um, you can also add things like infinite planes. So like for example, if I wanted this whole thing to be sitting on a plane, I could add an infinite plane object in here. And you can see how now there's a plane in the background all around here. And you could adjust, in this case, you can't really adjust the settings for an infinite plane, but you can see how that would show up in the V-Ray geometry section. Now let's talk about your settings section within your asset editor. So within your asset editor, you can adjust things like if your rendering is gonna work with your CPU or your GPU. So you can use your graphics card um, in order to carry the load of rendering instead of your uh, computer's processor. You can also adjust things like your camera settings. So let's say for example that I wanted to brighten this scene up. A lot of the time you don't want to brighten your lights when you do something like this, you want to adjust your exposure. And so you would go into your camera tab down here and you can either use kind of your standard camera settings or you can adjust this to advanced settings to set more like actual shutter speed like a camera. But you can see how if you increase your shutter speed, then your image is gonna get brighter. And you're gonna use this a lot for like interior type renderings um, to brighten them up. So you can see how I can adjust how bright the effects are and everything else within my rendering using these settings. So you can also adjust the size of your render output. You can adjust some of your uh, your background settings, like what kind of environment in, is in here. There's a lot of different things you can adjust within this section as well. And then the last thing I wanna talk about just real quick is the different kinds of render settings in here, as well as some of the settings in the actual render window itself. And so what you can do is within the asset editor, there's two options. Well, there's really three options, but in this case, we're gonna focus on these first two. So we already talked about, you can either do a static render with V-Ray by clicking, on, clicking this little drop down and selecting the first option. And you can see how whenever this uh, little red box is in here, that means that your rendering is actually working. So you can click on that again to turn your render off. So that's just a static rendering. And then the second option is your interactive rendering, which is your rendering that's gonna update with whenever you adjust your scene. So you can see how when I turn on an interactive render, this is changing with me. So, and then within your V-Ray image itself, there's also a ton of different settings you can change in here. So if I maximize this, you know what, I'm not gonna maximize this. So you can adjust everything from your, you can turn on and off different RGB values, you can do an alpha mask, you can turn this to black and white. There's a ton of different settings in here that we'll get into some of them in the future. Um, but you can do things like a region render. So I could set this where this would only render this object right here if I was to come in and adjust it. So. You can see how if I rotate around, it's only gonna adjust different things within this box that I drew. So this is really useful for like swapping out materials. So like for example, if I was to come in here and I wanted to just test 
if I wanted to just test what it would look like to swap out the material on this object, then you could come in here and you could set a region render. And then you could apply a new material to this object. And you can see how what this would do is this would only render the change that happens within the box that we drew. So this wouldn't go in here and adjust everything, which can be a real time saver when you have like really in-depth renderings. You don't necessarily want to adjust everything because it'll take forever to update. And then there's also a whole bunch of options down here for different things that you can do as well. So you can use things like forcing the color clamping to see areas where your models or where your lighting's kind of washed out or too bright. So there's a ton of different things down here that you can mess with as well. So I don't want to get too far in depth on that right now. I more wanted to give kind of an overview of the way everything works. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into my settings in my asset editor and I'm going to make this a larger image. So in this case, we'll do a 1280 by 720. And you can see how that adjusts the size of your image when you do that. We're going to let this render out a little bit. And remember that the larger your image is, the longer it's going to take to render. And then once we have an image that we like, we can just come up here and use the save button in order to save a copy of our image. So one of the things I'm trying to do with the V-Ray tutorials is really make them kind of a step-by-step -step start to finish type thing. Because I feel like a lot of the tutorials out there just kind of dive in and get way into detail and they don't even teach you where everything is. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you at all? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Also leave a comment. Let me know, uh, let me know what kind of V-Ray tutorials you'd like to see in the future. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.